Hello everyone, welcome to Law Excellence Daily Hindu News Analysis. Today we will be looking into some important articles that appeared on 13th June 2020. Before going into discussion, a small announcement. A webinar will be held on 14th June 2020 at 4 pm on how to prepare for civil service examination. It will be conducted by Dr. Rambabu sir, Director of Law Excellence IAS. And one more announcement, there is also an All India Scholarship Test on 15th June 2020 at 11am. For any queries, please call to this number given below. And admissions have started for NCIT Foundation course and also prelims come mains for 2021 batch. Today's personality for discussion is Ponam Malakondaya IAS. She is a 1988 batch IAS officer from Andhra Pradesh. She has been into the service for almost 32 years. She has worked in various areas like education, social welfare, agriculture and Panchayati Raj. She is best known for her honesty. And she was honored as India's third honest IAS officer according to a survey conducted in 2012 by India Today. And because of her strong resistance to corruption, she was transferred for seven times in the span of six years and many a times she was not uh, given an allocation after the transfer for months together. And her most talked about thing is the fight against the Monsanto Seeds project where the corporation was banned from supplying BT cotton seeds to farmers. Why it was banned? Because the corporation uh, refused to pay compensation for the farmers who got affected by using the seeds produced by Monsanto seeds. She is known in IAS circle as the most tough and committed IAS officer. So we can use this personality's achievement as a case study in our GS paper for ethics. Now as usual our discussion will be categorized into two. One is deep daily editorial news analysis and other is targeted news analysis. In deep, we will be discussing those articles appeared in editorial pages of the Hindu. In targeted news analysis, we will be discussing those articles that appeared on the other pages of the Hindu. And we have here mentioned the page numbers of Hyderabad and Bangalore edition. Please have a look into it. You can download the notes in PDF format given in the link in the description box. And every day we will conduct a daily current affairs quiz consisting of 10 questions which will be started at 9.30 pm and link for this test also will be available in the description box. Please have a look into it. The first article for today's discussion is streamed education is diluted education. See the content given in this article will be so useful for us to write a critic, a strong critic on online education system if UPSC asks a question on it. Now what the article says. See article mentions that recently there was a circular issued by university's grants commission. So what is this circular? This circular encourages universities to adopt massive open online courses offered on its Swayam platform. Okay, fine. What is wrong in, in that circular then? Because right now we are in lockdown. Now students can't go to the universities and study. So it is better they will they can register in massive open online courses and they can study what is wrong in it. But the issue is there is one more point in the circular which the article is criticizing. Now it was believed that now this massive open online courses is being used and is used as an instrument to achieve the gross enrollment target of 30 percent in higher education by 2021 okay fine what is wrong in that why we can't achieve why we should not achieve gross enrollment ratio of 30 percent or what now the problem is see you have to achieve gross enrollment ratio in a different means it's you should not achieve through this massive open online courses this is what the article is trying to argue why what is the wrong uh, if you achieve uh, this gross enrollment ratio of 30 percent through mass uh, massive open online courses see the offline classroom ecosystem have a different set of value system and these online courses they they are based on two things one is content and consumption 
they are based on this twin principles of content and consumption in this online courses the teacher generates content and the student consumes but this is not the case with offline courses or the classroom ecosystem in classroom ecosystem the teacher acts as an intellectual midwife who facilitate in the birth of students ideas and insights and at the same time the student also plays a role of intellectual midwife in expanding the ideas of the teacher but this can't happen in online courses this is one issue with respect to online courses and the second thing which the article is mentioning is that see the classroom spaces they will give a set of skills in dialogue debate discussion and also in friendship but the online courses do not create this spaces and they won't generate this type of skills like you know skills for debate skills for dialogue skills for disagreement so this is one issue with respect to online courses and the second thing see the policy makers behind this swayam platform they excluded courses like engineering medicine pharmacy from this massive open online courses they only applied this mocks to arts humanities social sciences and uh, basic sciences now what made the policy makers to distinguish between these two streams of education because they believe that engineering medicine pharmacy they need laboratory and pract- practical skills but that is not the case with respect to humanities and social sciences but the article criticizes the assumption of the policy makers and it says that see the classroom is a laboratory to test our ideas it is a laboratory to test our opinions it is also a laboratory to test our interpretations so even this classroom teaching is important for social sciences arts and humanities the article also argues that see classrooms and campus they provide spaces for solidarity in the face of discrimination in the face of fear and in the face of anxiety which an online course can't provide see if you can't give a space to the student to share his ideas and to contest his ideas then the whole education system gets diluted to just providing mere information and mere information is not the value of the education system this is what the article is trying to say so what what it is suggesting is that see the present circular it should be a stop gap solution because right now we are in lockdown so to address to come out of this lockdown yes you can provide online courses but it should be on a ad hoc basis you can't enforce them as a permanent on a permanent basis and you can't use this as an instrument to achieve the goals of uh, gross enrollment ratio this is what the core essence of the whole article and regarding syllabus mapping it comes under mains gs paper 2 issues related to development and management of social sector services relating to education and also related to human resources now the issue is covid-19 lockdown and the dimension is impact on the functionality of education sector now what is the learning objective which you have learned thing is that criticism against online education especially the mock courses criticism on online education so the article is mentioning what are the advantages of offline classroom teaching okay now we will see about this swayam platform what is this swayam platform it is nothing but study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds it was launched in the year 2017 by ministry of human resources development what it what is the aim of this swayam platform it aim is to provide one integrated platform and portal for online courses you can register under this platform and you will get credits okay suppose if you want to pursue a course on anthropology now if this swayam platform provides anthropology courses you can register there and you can finish your course for which you will be getting credits also now mocks this massive online open courses are provided through this swayam platform various academic institutions and other institutions they were involved in providing this 
courses massive open online courses so there is one key term which the article is mentioning gross enrollment ratio what is the target we have said 30 percent in higher education by 2021 what was the target right now uh, so what what is the status right now right now in 2018-19 we are almost at 26.3 percent around now what is this gross enrollment ratio it measures enrollment as percentage of a specific age group of the population for example with respect to higher education it takes into consideration 8 to 23 years of group so how much percentage of the students in this age group got enrolled in higher education with when compared to the total number of students in this age group that is what gross enrollment ratio so the next article for discussion is black lives and the experiment called america now recently we have seen a nine minute video clip where a black person was crushed on his neck by a white police personnel in minneapolis and this resulted in the in the death of that black person and after this incident we have, we have seen a lot of protests in united states of america and also in other countries now what the article is trying to say is that see this racial killings is not a new thing in united states of american history this state sponsored or state promoted violence is not a new thing and if you observe the 340 years of africans history in america almost for 87 percent of the historical time they don't have any rights till 1964 and 65 the blacks uh, in america they don't have any rights but after 1965 also we are witnessing this type of instances so this state centric or state sponsored violence or blacks is not a new thing in united states of america but the article mentions that the protests which are seen after this uh, recent video clipping is unprecedented in many ways it is different to the earlier protests and in what way it is different the first thing is in the recent protest we have seen people from multiple races they joined in this protest and we have seen more number of white americans they have participated in the protest which was not the case before this is one difference and the second difference most of the time the protest they they, they used to confine to united states of america but right now the protest ex, uh, it got spread through other countries too for example it was there in canada the protests have seen in new zealand the protest have the protest were also seen in china so this became a global issue for the first time which was not the case earlier now what what made the white americans to react what made the white americans to join in the protest see the nine minute video clip convinced the white americans that blacks are the victims of the police and the criminal justice system earlier they used to suspect blacks but right now they got convinced yes it is the uh, state police system and the criminal justice system they are discriminatory for the blacks this is what made the white americans to protest in that large numbers now this is what the essence of the article the article also warns the global countries and white americans to acknowledge the fact that socio-economic deprivation and the cruelty of criminal justice system towards black is not because of the blacks failings but it is because of the racial connotations that is very much inherent in the functioning of state institutions across united states of america this is what everyone has to acknowledge and regarding syllabus mapping it comes under mains gs paper 2 international relations effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries on india's interest and what is the issue here the racism is the issue that was being discussed the learning objective is in what way the present protests in united states of america are different to that of earlier ones okay now these are the things which we have discussed in this present article one is in what way the present protests are different to that of from earlier ones and in united states of history this protest or you know black killings is not a new thing it is it was there always and we also said that in 87 percent of history of blacks in america these people have witnessed this type of racial killings so it's not a new thing in that sense 
now but there are some fundamental changes which the new protests have seen when compared to the earlier ones so these are the three things which in you uh, know which distinguish the present protest from the earlier ones and have a look now the first one is people from all backgrounders they have participated in the protest and the protest traversed borders and oceans too and the video able to convince white people that blacks are victims of police and criminal justice system and before that these assumptions are completely opposed by the white americans but this time they got convinced the next article for discussion is supreme court allows firms to negotiate with staff on lockdown wages see in the recent times there was a lockdown which affected the industrial units and enterprises in to a larger extent now the employers were not in a position to pay wages to the employees but in the month of march there was an order issued by the central government under disaster management act of 2005 what is this order it directed the employers to pay full wages to the employees now the factory owners opposed to the order and they approached the supreme court and supreme court recently ordered the factory owners and the private uh, establishments to negotiate with the workers with respect to the payment of wages that is what the issue here and syllabus mapping is mains gs paper 3 economy poverty and unemployment issue is covid 19 lockdown and the dimension is impact of this lockdown on wages right wages and employment so the learning objective is to know about the order given by the government and the recent supreme court order with respect to payment of wages to employees during the lockdown now we will look into the order issued by the central government on march 29th according to this order the central government ordered the employers under the disaster management act of 2005 to provide full wages to the employees that too the wages has to be paid within the due date and the full wages has to be paid and this this order is binding on the all, all the employers however this order is challenged by the employers associations and factory owners why it said that see the present lockdown situation is problematic not only for employees also for employers now they also have poor resources to pay to the employees this is one thing and also they say that under industrial disputes act of 1947 it allows employers to proceed with layoff if there is any situation of natural calamity they argue that see according to industrial disputes act of 1947 the employer also can pay 50% of the wages during a natural calamity and now corona is considered as a natural calamity so now whatever the order central government issued on march 29th it contradicts with the provisions that are provided under industrial disputes act of 1947 but there is a counter argument to this also now there is a section called section 72 of the disaster management act now according to this section whatever order the central government issues under disaster management act of 2005 it will be prevailing over other acts during natural calamity times the next article for discussion is government puts off decision on states gst dues till july so recently a gst council meeting was held in which union finance minister have decided to convene again a new meeting in the month of july to decide on various issues like the amount of compensation that has to be paid to the states and also the amount of dues the central government has to pay to the states now why the central government has to pay compensation says to the state governments now see as per the gst act it is mandatory on part of the central government to pay compensation says to the states if there is any uh, shortfall of revenues on part of the state governments the syllabus mapping is it comes under gs paper 3 economy and the issue is covid 19 lockdown and its impact on gst collections that is what the dimension and the learning objective is we will look into what is this gst council okay now we will look into the gst council so the gst council will consist of union finance minister and state finance minister and union finance minister will be the chairman of this gst council and whatever the decisions that are being taken at gst council will be made by 3/4 majority of the votes and center has 1/3 of the vote share and the states combined have 2/3 of the vote share now what are the functions of gst 
it decides which tax levied by the center states and local bodies will go into the gst it also looks into which goods and services will be subjected to gst and it also decides the basis and the rates at which gst will be applied now what is this goods and service tax it is a one indirect tax for the whole nation which aims to make india one unified common market the gst intends to subdue most indirect taxes under a single taxation system the next article for discussion is yoked together migrant workers and farmers are back in punjab fields now the farmers in punjab they are trying to attract the returned migrant workers who went to up and bihar as these migrant workers are specialized in sewing the paddy in punjab and these migrant workers are also readily accepting uh, the request of punjab farmers as there are no proper livelihood opportunities for these migrant workers in their villages these migrant workers are also being offered free transportation extra wage and other incentives and their basic needs also are taken care of by these farmers now regarding syllabus mapping it comes under uh, gs paper 1 migration and also under gs paper 3 economy okay so the issue is covid 19 and the dimension is labor crunch created due to this covid 19 now what is the learning objective we will see the plight of migrant workers caused because of this lockdown okay now we will see the issue of migrant workers now according to world economic forum and uh, international labor organization estimates there are 139 million migrants in india and 400 million workers would be affected by lockdown this is an important statistic which we can use for mains point of view now the, the recently we have seen the lockdown was announced suddenly and we have seen uh, it it resulted in shutdown of industries factories and other workplace all over the country and suddenly now the workers were left with no work to do now most of these migrant workers they used to they usually hail from up madhya pradesh bihar and rajasthan and they stay in this metro cities but because of this lockdown and because of no opportunities in the metro cities now they started moving towards their native places but because of lack of transportation facilities we have seen the hard journey which this migrant workers witnessed during this lockdown and also uh, to address this issue government recently started shramik special trains now the uh, objective of launching this special trains is to transport migrant workers from urban areas to their hometowns the next article for discussion is reserves surge dollar 8.2 billion in a week exceed dollar 500 billion for the first time so the article mentions that recently india's foreign exchange reserves crossed 500 billion dollars and this is for the first time we have crossed 500 billion dollars and this reserves is enough for india for a period of 14 months and why there is a sharp increase and this is for two reasons one is uh, currency revaluation and the second one is dollar mop up intervention by the central bank so these are the two reasons for which we have seen a sharp increase in foreign exchange reserves now the syllabus mapping is it comes under gs paper 3 economy mobilization of resources and the issue is foreign exchange reserves dimension is increase in indian foreign exchange reserves so the in the learning objective we will see what is this foreign exchange reserves and the advantage of this increased foreign exchange reserves on for on indian economy okay now what is the advantage of increased foreign exchange reserves of course it will help india to ensure against a future contagion that is one thing and the second one is it will increase the foreign portfolio investment inflows into india now we will see what actually this forex reserves is see foreign exchange reserves consist of four types of assets one is foreign currency assets like dollar and the second one is gold reserves the third one is special drawing rights sdr and the fourth one is reserve tranche or reserve position that is held with imf international monetary fund so in broad sense foreign exchange reserves are the assets held by a central bank in foreign currencies so what are the foreign currency assets which india have we have us dollars euros chinese yuan japanese yen and pound sterling now what is this special drawing right it is an international reserve asset it is created by imf in 1969 now it supplements member countries official reserves 
so what is sdr it is nothing but a weighted basket of major currencies okay now the other one is reserve position or reserve tranche what is this it is a portion of the required quota of currency each member country must provide to the international monetary fund that can be utilized for its own purposes that is what reserve tranche now we will look into prelims practice question the co first one which among the following statements about the goods and service tax is are correct now the state has a greater say in conclusion of any decision in the gst council now we have discussed the voting rights there right so just apply that second one while the state taxes like state vat and octroi were subsumed taxes like entertainment and luxury tax are exempted from the ambit of gst now select the correct answer use, using the code given below so please give your option please give your answer in the comment section the next question is which among the following permanent members of united nations security council has the currency included in the basket of imf special drawing rights that is a legal trend tender inside the territories so four countries are given which are part of which are part of imf's sdrs so select the correct answer using the codes given below please give your answer in the comment section so we also gave a mains practice question here do you think online mode of education can be a substitute for classroom based learning critically examine so we have discussed an article which criticizes the online mode of education it also gives various arguments why we have to go for offline education so now the directive is you have to critically examine the arguments put forwarded in that article so before closing our discussion there is a small announcements admissions have started for online life general studies pcm batch prelims come mains 2021 batch for any queries please call to this number 9052193939 and with that we have completed today's discussion thank you one and all